Next speaker is uh, Dr. Alexander Huber, uh, technical mm -hmm. project leader in the cell and gene therapy unit at Novartis Pharma here in Basel, uh, talking about reprogramming T cells, manufacturing challenges of CAR therapies. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to, to be here. Um, a miracle happened, so fr finally we cured cancer in, a, um, in children, and uh, this is um, a, a beautiful moment in medical history, and um, I'm really happy that I'm um, part of that uh, miracle. And we are um, continuing on this journey and try to have um, as many patients treated as possible. And this is one of my uh, challenges. So um, manufacturing challenges for CAR therapies to reaching um, out for a lot more patients than we recently have. So that's uh, why this cell and gene therapy unit at Novartis has been founded. And I'm talking about um, all this uh, about manufacturing and how to cope with that challenges there. So um, there is a little coincidence that this uh, Today, actually, our first uh, pediatric patient for ALL is on the Novartis campus shaking hands. Unfortunately, I have to be here and not shaking her hand. But uh, this has been um, um, in the media quite some time already. So this was a breakthrough leukemia th uh, treatment saved little girl. You can have a look at it in YouTube. And um, since July 2014, CTL-019 has awarded the US FDA breakthrough, breakthrough therapy. And uh, this is the first uh, CAR therapy to receive this classification so far. So we are proud to, um, to, pro, um, to go on uh, with this therapy here. So um, I'll just give you a, a brief, simplified um, approach to that um, uh, therapy. Um, my colleague, Jens Haskarl talked about this this morning, so I'm, I'm focusing more than on the manufacturing aspects, but just to remind you, so at the end, uh, it's obtaining T cells from a patient, then uh, you equip the t uh, the, this uh, uh, cell to kill CD19 plus cells, so for the in, in B cells in this case, and reinfuse the reprogrammed T cells into the patient. So that's in a nutshell what happens. So now, uh, when it comes to large cell, um, large scale manufacturing, something that is really important, uh, you need a facility, and uh, we acquired one uh, four months after we, as, um, um, we announced the deal with the University of Pennsylvania. So this was uh, the university that first treated these patients. And um, we have now a state-of-the-art GMP commercial cell processing facility at Morris Plains in New Jersey. Um, the site is equipped with all the capabilities to produce uh, CTLO-19 uh, for clinical and commercial purposes. And um, basically it's scale out the production of genetically modified cells. Uh, we call it the cell processing center. Um, this is the first one. It's a really large facility. We have there, uh, um, yeah, and there will following uh, another uh, other cell processing center then worldwide after this. But we start with this and uh, did quite some investment here. And at the facility, um, we will comply with all GMP regulations. Um, and ex uh, yeah, the aim is to, to have all the requ requirements put in place uh, to uh, fulfill global re uh, regulatory re requirements. So um, this is the most important slide in my talk. So um, you see what the umbrella, what uh, Novartis is doing here um, with the cell processing center. One thing that is really important to know that uh, this is something that you cannot fit into an ordinary uh, biologics manufacturing facility. It's simply something completely different. And this is what I really like that we have um, the opportunity to have um, a completely dedicated unit and a dedicated facility to do that because uh, it's just something what's never been done before in the pharmaceutical industry. So you, you need to have the right mindset. You, had, you have to, to set and establish all regulatory and quality requirements that, that, that are not really yet established. So you, we were really at the frontier here, pioneering uh, the work. And um, 
you see on the, on the right side the, 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 the cell processing center where you have um, the T cells from the patient, then you have activation with magnetic beads on the magnetic surf uh, on this bead surface you have CD3 and CD28 antibodies that then activate the T cells. You have the transduction uh, where you need lentiviral vectors for. You have an expansion where you uh, uh, need a lot of medium and human serum that uh, the T cells grow. You have harvest cryopreservation and all of that uh, requires a, a very complex uh, supply chain. Um, we have over 100 materials that go into this process. I mean, there are cell culture bags, cell additives, uh, tubes, and whatever you, 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 you see that it's, it's really very complex when you compare it to a, an ordinary pharmaceutical manufacturing process. And um, you have on the left side the, the third parties that come into play. I mean, uh, this is something that has not yet been really done in the industry. So you have uh, lentiviral vectors and the on companies that are producing these vectors, they are not really yet up to speed when it comes to um, GMP requirements. So we, we do a lot of work um, investing in this uh, third party companies, bringing them up to speed, delivering us with the right quality and the, 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 the mindset we need to have. For the beads, it's, it's exactly the same thing. It's they're coming from, from Thermo Fisher and that they are, um, not really experienced in producing these beads for, for, for uh, GMP purposes. So they are used for, for doing this for, for research grade or for, for analytics. But when you uh, want to apply this to patient cells, um, I'm there since two years um, 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 working with them very closely to establish all these pro production processes and also the scale up uh, to allow them uh, to deliver us with the right quality of beads. And they uh, recently um, uh, decided to build up a completely new facility, completely dedicated for this again. So you see, uh, it's not only our side, the cell processing center that need to be dedicated. A team that is formed around that is also the third parties that are exclusively uh, delivering for, for this therapy that need to be built up uh, uh, in this very complex environment. This makes it e extremely fascinating, but also extremely demanding because, um, yeah, we want to continue on this journey to delivering a miracle to patients. And, and you, you, you need to do this with um, several thousands of patients and not only um, a few dozens. And this is uh, what it, it takes. And we want to, to be um, commercial quite soon. So yeah, we are, we are better get um, up to speed here. So um, just, um, again, to remind you what, what uh, it takes then, um, harvesting patient T cells, I will be uh, a little bit uh, faster on that because Jens uh, in the morning already explained how it works. But um, at the end, uh, you have uh, in the hospitals, in the centers, you get, uh, uh, you have a leukapheresis, yeah, so you, you get blood of the patients and then um, you, you get um, out of this, uh, out of the bloodstream, you collect um, uh, the white blood cells, and then uh, the mononucleo cells kept by size in a process called uh, counterflow uh, elutuation. So it, with an elutra, we do um, uh, an enrichment for the T, T lymphocytes. Then um, we equip these T cells and first of all stimulate these T cells with the, this paramagnetic beads. So. The beads interact with the T cell receptor and uh, the CD28 cross simulatory domain that uh, provides a strong signal for them to grow. And um, at the end, you, you transduce this activated T cells uh, with, the, with the lentiviral vector that they will be equipped with this card construct against uh, CD19. So an administration um, after expansion uh, in the bioreactor, the magnetic beads are removed from the cells that are harvested, washed, and cryopreserved. And uh, when all the release criteria have been met, the cryopreserved genetically modified T cells are shipped back to treatment centers where the cells are thawed and infused into the patients. At the moment, this is the Morris Plains facility where they um, do that um, for, the, for the program.
the, the patients may receive lump, lump to depleting chemotherapy prior to uh, the infusion of the CTL-19 cells. Now to the challenges um, I mentioned already. Um, the bulk for bulk manufacturing takes, uh, as I said, a lot of different materials and you are coming from a very academic pr um, process that has been developed at the University of Pennsylvania. So you have the tens of patients and now we go into the thousands of patients from um, non-qualified uh, 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 reagents to qualified reagents only. And uh, especially when you, when you see then, for example, we have a human serum that is needed for the expansion of the T cells. Um, we need so much material now that um, I, I recently founded a, a sub team called Project Vampire because we need that much blood from the whole planet. So <laughs> uh, this is really hard to, to, to get in the quantities you need. And in addition, there are some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, low scale or uh, smaller companies, they would have the right quality, but for example, they don't like to be then exposed to the FDA. So they don't like to be um, qualified for clinical and commercial manufacturing. So this is another problem. They just say, well, uh, you, can, you can have the serum, but we don't want to have um, any qualification done here or validation. So um, rather going out of the business and do something else than have the FDA come. So this is, this, this are, this is really the everyday challenges you have. And uh, then you have to select other vendors or the suppliers for, for your reagents or, or um, medium additive. So this is, this is what, what I'm doing all the time at the moment. And of course you want to f come from an open, semi-open to a closed process. So automatization is a, a very big uh, topic as well. So um, yeah, process characterization is something that is very important. So you have the manufacturing process under control the regulatory requirements that need to be put in place, um, and so on, and complex logistics. I already mentioned that point. So um, other points are that um, we have batch size one. This is something new to the industry, I would say. I mean, we have coming from the field where I produced like 10,000s of vials or 100,000s of vials you were able to stockpile. This is something else than here. Uh, I mean, the batch is the patient. So if we lose this batch, we might lose the patient. This is a little difficult for, for the, the, the people that work in this facility because they know if they, they mess up or if something fails, th it has a direct immediate impact on the patient. So this is something you have to take, uh, take to account that you, you, you need to be very careful about. So and then, um, yeah, and significant investments uh, you, as you see, we have a facility where the first here on the market and we have a very different, uh, different supply chain that, uh, that is um, compared to other facilities in the pharmaceutical industry. Then uh, another point is that um, scale up, it's maybe possible with the magnetic beads, the, the plasmid and the virus, but when it comes then to dispatch size number one, you can just do scale out at the moment. So we have just more suits, more uh, technic technicians, more people that operate the facility. And uh, this is um, how it works at the end. What we are doing here, we investing heavily in, in robotics that we can, we can cope with that. I mean, we want to, to go to several thousands of patients and we cannot simply do that by, by scale out. It's just then you need too, too many facilities. But at the moment, that's what, what we do. We have several facilities that come in and, and the one that is recently there and uh, um, supplying all of the clinics at the moment. So coming to the end as well, uh, one big, big issue is as well the, the QC, QC testing. So we have uh, this one, uh, over 100 um, um, materials. You, there is really a high cost in release all of that. So all the bags and, and there is a lot of critical materials that are di in direct com contact with the uh, patient's blood, patient's T cells, and you need really to control that. Uh, all this, this uh, um, uh, laboratory test you need to put in place for that to come to, to clinics and then to, to market. This is something that takes an uh, enormous amount of time. 
usually we have a little bit that the joke internally that um, all you have a new material you have just test it no problem but uh, in fact this is one of the biggest issues we have uh, to test all this material to release all this material to have a huge QC test lab in place this is an, an enormous amount of work that is always a little underestimated okay summary most of it um, I told you um, it's just in a nutshell, uh, it's a really different setting. Um, it's completely new in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, I'm happy to be part of a unique team that is has trying to build an, a new way of um, doing pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing. We have batch size one. We have uh, very critical and special materials. We need to have third parties bringing up them up to speed to GMP manufacturing. And we are very dedicated to, to pave the way for personalized therapy here. And I think at the moment we are number one and we hopefully stay there for a long time, uh, being able to cure thousands of patients uh, uh, that have cancer. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, actually, I was wondering uh, the cost at the end of this process. You know, this um, um, so much work is going into into developing this, you know, individualized, you know, therapy. So uh, I was actually wondering how the cost is going to be borne at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, considering the, the the huge investment, you know, in developing this medication. Most probably you should uh, ask my CEO, but uh, <laughs> um, you, you see at the moment for the patient that the cost is zero because at the moment the patients are treated for free. But sir, you're, you're absolutely right. In, in the future, we want to, to, to make money out of that as well. But um, I'm extremely happy at the moment that Novartis really um, took a bit bath here in, in this field and invested enormous amounts of money already for the future. It's really hard to say where we will land. There is, at the moment, we are, don't talk about um, how much it costs. Maybe there, there are, as I said, plans uh, um, that I'm not aware, but uh, um, it should be lower than uh, a, a transplantation for sure. So that's the plan where we will end. I think this is really where we, we need to have more development and, uh, and progressing here to, to say something more concrete.